Hello everybody, welcome to the unofficial opening day of my Utah archery hunt. The hunt's been, why well, I say unofficial, the hunt has been open for a week for both deer and elk in this area for archery. And I have a tag for both, but this is my first day up here and I'm headed up to deer camp. If you guys follow this channel, you guys probably know about High Country Deer Camp. Feeling a little lazy this year, but it's time to get up here and see what's going on and see what bucks are rolling around. So if I don't make a video out of this, we'll at least put it in the vlog. So we got the bow, vortex spotting scope, some food and water, just enough to survive for a night. So we gotta make it through this mess and get up to camp. Track is 4 p.m. Ooh, looks like a pretty good buck track right there. 4 p.m. So we're an hour and 10 minutes into the journey, and only five minutes away from where I'll settle down. The glass. Pretty stoked on my cardio abilities for the first time up here. I've been doing a lot of cardio at the gym, but. I have not been doing anything on the mountain until now. So pretty stoked on that. In five minutes, we'll be able to post up, get the glass up, <clears throat> see if we can't find some bucks in some of my favorite spots to hunt. That's the only thing I have in my favor is I kind of know the area from years of hunting it, but I do not know which bucks are here. So that's the goal of this trip, figure that out. point to where I like to start checking all the most popular spots I take me a minute to just catch my breath and settle down and really start picking this apart but we made it guys first day out probably gonna sit here till I don't know, 536, and if nothing at that point, I'll probably move in to sit in what we call the shooter tree. So let's see what we can turn up in the glass first. Man, if there's one thing I've learned up here through about the hours of like four to six, um, a lot of deer tend to move beds and kind of get into what I call or consider like staging areas. And so I've been glassing these hills non-stop for the last little bit maybe 30 minutes is all glassing the same stuff over and over and i know their favorite spots to like bed and everything this is why i keep glassing didn't see anything for the first 30 minutes glass these beds down here below me across the canyon and there's a new deer sitting in it so i'm gonna get the scope out to see if i can identify it it's got a fairly orange orange coat still Well, just a doe, guys, but that just shows how easily things can change. So I'll sit here and keep looking around, hoping for a buck. Well, no buck so far, so I'm going to go ahead and move down and sit tonight in what we call the shooter tree. Um, I've been able to take a buck out of the shooter tree. Brian had an opportunity, and uh, another buddy of mine, Byron, also took a buck from the shooter tree so all in all it's a pretty good spot when you don't have anything else to do I just have to be careful on my way in I've got to cut through some pine so definitely gonna go slow and um, make sure I don't jump any bucks in there or at least try not to but that's the game plan now Alright 
guys, it's 5.30 p.m. This is what we call the shooter tree because of this guy right here, this tree. It's gonna get comfortable and hold tight. Usually the bucks, if they ever feed out, they come out right there and right towards me, so. Just a waiting game now. It's gonna be tough to film for you guys, but <clears throat> figured something's better than nothing, so here we go. Well, that was unexpected, but there's a nice four by five buck above me. I don't know where he came from. Honestly, he must have been bedded right there. But I have wide open basin between me and him, so it's gonna be difficult to put the snakes on him. Really pretty buck, four by five frame. He's got a split G3 on this right side. He's slowly feeding up and maybe if he goes behind these trees I'll make a stock on him. Somewhere past that dead tree. Well, that didn't work. This is the cut the buck was in, so I was on the other side of that sneaking up. Plan was to come over the top right below this tree, but by the time I got here, he had made it to that cut, so I looked up and was already pinned 85 yards. So freaking steep. That's a struggle not having a spotter. So running out of time. I think I'll just head down to the shooter tree. And if I got time to sit before dark, I'll just sit there. But yeah, he was Buck was right here. By the time I got here, he was on the other side where I was. Dang it. Well, straight down we go. Probably throw into another mullet. Guys, it is time. We are headed out. Not our first time of the year, because if you know, we uh, just got back from Alaska. We went and did a caribou hunt. But this is kind of like our first, well, this is our first hunt of the fall here in the lower 48. So I wanted to show you guys real quick. Um, if you guys watch our vlog from Alaska, I prepared a bunch of food and froze it and took it with us to Alaska in the Yeti cooler. And we ate really good for the first five days. Uh, a lot of people asked to show what food I prepared. Well, you're not going to get that today because I was pretty lazy. I went straight up the easiest food I could find and I went to the store and bought beef. <laughs> <laughs> That's so positive because when you said all I got was store bought meat, yeah. I thought you meant just sandwich meat. Oh no. <laughs> so I got stuff to do burgers one night, uh, fajitas one night, and steaks one night. Uh, but it's pretty lame. This is a pretty lame cooler from uh, Camp Casey. Usually have some pretty good meals prepared beforehand. Um, take in like some chili, some soups, whatever, you, what have you, made out of wild game meat. But I'm not gonna lie to you. The fr little freezer, the uh, Butler household is running a little dry right now. And it usually is this time of year. Um, I mean, even we had a moose, we had an elk, two elk, a, a white-tailed deer. We had five animals in the freezer last year, and uh, it's almost gone. 
So we are headed out today to go chase the wily antelope. Uh, I have an antelope tag in my pocket. It's an archery antelope hunt. I've never hunted antelope with a bow before. Uh, so I thought I'd give it a try this year. It's a pr super easy tag to get here in the state of Idaho. It's a draw you have to put in for, but it's an unlimited draw. So if you put in first choice, you will get this tag. The last time I was in this area that I'm going to was before I started Hush. Me and my dad drew elk tags over there probably 12, 13 years ago. And uh, I remember when we were there, I uh, was like, man, antelope hunting would be good over here. There's a lot of antelope. So hopefully it's still the same. Like I said, it's been 12 or 13 years, but I've been doing a lot of e-scouting with my Onyx. I uh, got some water holes picked out. Hopefully it, hopefully it doesn't come down to a, a ground blind situation. It might. Um, we are going to take a ground blind with us. I would prefer to do spot and stock, but you never know. I am really just want to fill a tag at the end of the day. So that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, if it requires us sitting in a blind for 10 hours a day, Logie down. I could do it. You could do it? I brought my pillow. You brought a pillow. Good. <laughs> it doesn't go good in a ground blind. <laughs> anyway, we are headed out, guys. Got everything loaded up. And... We're gonna be gone for the next couple days anyways two or three we'll see how it how it goes but first time of the year another special thing today august 30th is the opener in idaho for elk and deer for archery so if you're out and about good luck if you're headed out good luck go get after them i'm not gonna get too excited about elk this year until like the later part of the month it's been so hot and dry hopefully some things change it gets a little cooler weather and uh, then we can go get after some bugle and bulls i do have an archery elk tag in my pocket for the state of idaho but uh we're gonna concentrate on some antelope first and then uh hit the ground running hopefully the end of the month the last two weeks anyways and, and hunt elk pretty hard Logie barry you want to show us some, some, some new camera equipment yeah do we do some that well we got some new camera equipment for this year he's been real excited to show you people so it's pretty cool i'll just, I'll just grab my gear i'll just slap it down on the old jj so this guy is the new, the new, 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 new. It's the DJI Pocket 2. Um, if you guys have noticed, Matty Ice just got a new gimbal. He got the Weeble 2. And what that is, is a gimbal for a big camera, like what Casey's doing right here. There's a second route you can go to, and I don't know, cause I haven't tested it in the field yet. Just done some stuff at home. But this essentially is the same thing. His name is Wally. Wally. Just, just a little guy. It's pretty sweet little deal here. So if you guys have ever, if you're familiar with drones by DJI, like the Mavic, the Mavic Pro, it's the same camera, um, but on a gimbal. So DJI's products typically are some of the steadiest in the game. So just do a triple tap there, flip it over to you, and we're recording. And we're doing it's things. Be super smooth, as you can see. Do a 360. Oh, I thought like a jump 360 would be been cooler. Can I you like do a jump 360? I can do jump 360. Do it. Here's so ready. how, how he gets off the ground. Perfect, Ooh. dude. Perfect three. Put some effort into that. So we're gonna bring bring in this guy. It has a phone mount too, so you can use your phone as a monitor. But this will be the first trip for this little guy in the field. So we'll try that. It also comes with an external lav mic here. You can put this on Casey's shirt while he's doing a stock. How far away can I get? We're gonna test some things. Hmm. We're gonna test some things. Then in the old camera bag, what I picture for this is like, it's gonna be archery obviously, so a lot of stocks. It's not gonna be mule deer archery, so we're not gonna be dealing with trees. So the name of the game for me, I think, is I'm gonna try to get close enough without being seen and then kind of get in a spot where I can film Casey stalking in. So I'll slap a GoPro on him and then we'll be rocking the Sony two to 600 millimeter Sync is one of the greatest telephoto lenses I've ever used on my Sony. I actually call it the Canon, which is real ironic. Isn't it ironic? Got some extra batteries. Um, I got the 18 to 200 lens, which is a good like mid-range. And then you guys are on the 16 to 35 right now, so it's kind of more fisheye. Or not fisheye, but wide angle, so. All right, send it over to the boys. Boys, I'm sending it over to the boys. Send it. What's up guys, reporting live, semi-live from the shop. Look at this setup. Matt is a wizard when it comes to lighting, so he's always pointing these devices at me as we film. We just got done filming a how-to e-scout for elk, like archery elk hunting, on using the Onyx hunt map. And there's so many new layers and uh, tools and features that you can use, one being the 3D version, which I'm just sitting here messing with right here. You can just zoom in and out, using your fingers. I'm, I don't have a mouse on the old MacBook, so zoom in and out. It's cool, man. We've always wanted 3D, right? So many people are always like, Onyx would be so much better with a 3D map. 
And now we have 3D version, especially on desktop. It is available on the phone app, but not everywhere. And then of course, as normal, you can toggle from 3D to 2D, or if you want like the hybrid map. I always prefer either satellite mode, solo satellite mode, or the hybrid mode, because again, brings up all your top of lines. So that's gonna be a video, heck, it might even be up by the time you guys watch this, I'm not sure. But if you're looking for tricks and tips on how to e-scout, for mule deer, moose, elk, it's all gonna be living on this channel. You guys can search it out and find it if you need some help. Biggest thing when it comes to using the desktop version or even the phone app is just push buttons. Like a lot of people are like, man, there's a lot of features and a lot of things to learn. How do you learn it all at once? You don't really learn it all at once. You just push buttons, try things, set a track, do it at home. Another thing that you will wanna do before you go out in the field is save your maps. So pick your, Radius, pick your zone, your hunting camp, whatever it is, and save it before you go in the field because you can use it offline. You can be completely in airplane mode and still use maps if you save them beforehand. So why, why the dramatic lighting above and then the hard lighting right in my face? <laughs> so you use that to create separation, a depth of field. Uh, and one trick for anybody who wants to get into videography or likes to film while you're outdoors, Always try and put the sun or the light source on one side of your subject and the camera on the other side. You always want to be shooting from the shadow side. That's something that you can really tell the difference between somebody who knows what they're doing and somebody who doesn't know. It will make your footage look so much better. So shoot on that shadow side and that's, that's my tip for the day. What, and what if we're in a real life situation in the mountains and you can't get my shadow side? What are you going to do? I in can't, the moment, I'm going to draw it back on the big buck and you're on the sunny side. <laughs> then I'm going to shoot underexposed. When in doubt, shoot underexposed. You can there pull you more data from dark photos and videos than from blown out photos or videos. So there you have it from the professional himself, some tips and tricks on lighting. Um, since we're in here, let me give you guys an update on the garage. Matt noticed them almost instantly when he came in. So I added a few things to the walls and that's mostly because everything was literally laying on the ground. And now that I got the e-bikes and everything in here, I needed some more ground space. So let me walk you through it. Okay, the desk and the office space, it's basically the same. But as you come to the TV, you can see I added a few things. The first one being my Spanish goat, AKA feral goat. This one's from Hawaii, uh, 30 incher. I guess in Australia, dude, everyone was commenting like, you wanna hit that 40 inch mark, what? which is giant. So that's a good one for Hawaii, but I guess you guys in Australia have bigger. So yeah, so that's a 30 incher. I guess you guys in Australia have much bigger, but I think 30 inches is pretty dang good um, on Maui anyways. I decided to hang a couple of these sheds on the rack hub. I also got a set of axis steer sheds. I tweaked them because now that I have a few to look at, I was realized how awful I had them set. So that's more realistic where the eye guards really shoot out straight and the caudal points like face right towards you. Got this mule deer antler on the wall and got a coos buck on this little pedestal mount and uh, he's looking pretty sweet. And then I added my axis deer. So I didn't know what I wanted to do with them but I figured they'd go on this wall because this is the wall of European mounts. So they seem to fit well. I again, I kind of squeezed them in and a, a couple things I was not wanting to do. And what I was not wanting to do was block the view of this muzzleloader buck my brother shot. Luckily, the axis deer, they hang pretty dang close to the wall with these partial skull mounts. And all I did to clean the skulls was put them in water and pressure wash them off and then put some product on them to make them smell a lot better. They have a little bit of shine. And then this guy, my buddy Casey, did a European mount on this. This is my archery axis deer. Again, because it was so off balance, I didn't know exactly where to put it. And trust me guys, I don't, I don't overthink this stuff too much. I just kind of throw them up there. So that's the update from the garage. Other than that, it's just a big old mess. I'm getting ready for the hunts. Matt has been out. Uh, his buddy took a nice buck with his bow. I have not had a chance to get out yet. So hopefully soon. Okay, we're gonna do a five shot group. This is probably like 22 or 23 yards using my top pin so I do kind of naturally aim a little low because it's set for 30. Oh, I'll take that shot all day, every day, dude. Right behind the shoulder. Really enjoying this new bow. Nice. 
Nice. I've been uh, purposely trying to not shoot my arrows, so sometimes I'll kind of aim a little lower, a little higher, maybe left or right, but just want to get them right in that pocket. Dang, man. Dead deer. So our archery season is open here in Utah. Like I said, Matt's been up, his buddy shot a nice buck. And some other people, just from what I'm seeing on social, are shooting some slammers. It's always fun to cruise social media this time of the year to see who tags out opening weekend because our limited entry deer hunts also started and limited entry elk hunts. There have been some mega beasts killed already. The kind of animals that if you had a rifle tag in those units, you'd be bummed that they got taken out so early. I'm sure a few people had their eyeballs on some of the animals that have been taken already. Well, that's hunting. In our state, archery gets first dibs on our limited entry stuff. Elk, actually the rifle hunters get second, and then it's the muzzle loader limited entry. For mule deer, it's archery, muzzle loader, then rifle. What what is it in your states? For all the really hard to draw tags, um, like the premium stuff, what order does it go for weapon? Just curious, put it in the comment box. I'll take all five of those shots. Let's go take a look. You get groups like that, man? <laughs> I can I only shoot two 20, arrows. 22 yards. And again, I was trying to avoid. Did I ruin another one? I did. I clipped the black one. Dang it. I'll have to trim those up. So these are the five arrows I've dedicated as practice arrows. I've got a whole other dozen that the guys at Wild Arrow set up for me. That I'm gonna get set up for my hunting arrows. Yeah, I'm liking this new setup. Well, that's it from old South Slopes, guys. But again, thanks for watching another Hush Life vlog. If you like these kind of videos, let us know in the comment box. They seem to get really good traction and everyone likes an update, so.